a very small public site and building commission membership tonight, but we do have a quorum. And everybody else I think who's supposed to be here is here. So we're gonna start, I'll call the meeting to order at seven o'clock. And do we have a, does anybody have a flag? There's one behind Kathy. Oh yeah, Kathy, get your flag. Somebody different. Yay, thanks Kathy, join me in the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, under God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Hey, where, where can you find a flag if one's not available? <laughs> Pop quiz. Ah, Bob would know. The moon. The moon, yes. The moon, okay. <laughs> so you, you get that image of it on the moon and you can there you go. pull it right up. <laughs> I do have tiny little, like I have a tiny little one here. So I don't know if that would, if you put it in the there camera. You there you go. <laughs> yep. I always keep that nearby just in case. Okay, so public input, nah. And correspondence, nah. I'll go right through the um, approval of meeting minutes. So I'll make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes from our regular meeting of September 20 or April 27, uh, 2021. Okay. Dave Olson seconds. Thank you, Dave. Does anybody have any input or updates or anything like that? I think you had time to go through it. I went through them. I think they're fine. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And does anybody have to abstain? I don't think so. I think everybody was here last time. OK. So that's done. So then we can move right along to our um, old business and our school projects. So there was a um, report sent out by um, Rizzo, Geraldine distributed that to everyone. So Ken, you're on. Let me pull that up for me. Whoever has some background noise going on, if you could mute yourself, that would be helpful. Okay. For Rockwell, the landscaper uh, did some topsoil touch up and seeding. The uh, dumpster enclosure gates were completed. Uh, and the fence at the retaining wall by the gym was completed. Hey, hey Ken? Yes. Uh, I took a drive through there today and the uh, touch up and seating I thought was rather unacceptable. Uh, it looks like they did a couple minor areas that they did. Everything is hydro seeded with their tremendous amount of washouts, rocks, uh, roots sticking up. Uh, I took a variety of different pictures, so it really hadn't changed besides a couple very, very minor areas that he on a steep slope, which actually it looks to me like a lot of it really has to be relandscaped, or at least it's got to be graded better. So I'd, I'd appreciate you uh, checking with them and uh, seeing what, what they could do to uh, you know, make it satisfactory. It, it really is, is a very poor job in my estimation. I, I, I saw what you saw and I, I did talk to him on Saturday. I'll send him uh, something official tomorrow. Yeah, I, I don't, would not think that's acceptable at all for the committee. I haven't talked to the committee, but from what I saw there, it has not been really touched up to any any degree that would be acceptable, I think, for the committee. Yeah, Bob and I were up there um, earlier today, and we met with Eileen Earl about uh, the fields, but we'll get into that part later. But we both yeah. noticed Bob took pictures, too, of that whole um, bank along saw the two spots, which look like one one area on the steep bank coming down from parking looks like sure. it's around a catch basin and another one that's around like a manhole cover. Those look yeah. like they're graded and, and there's topsoil there and they're nice. But then as you go further, um, that one bank that that's right off Whittlesea that you can see, 
there's big gullies in that and that's yeah. just not bob's got pictures too if you need pictures so kind of the part that's by the basketball court um he's tried to redo that a couple times that we've asked the architect to see if the landscape architect can uh, come up with a, a solution for that because with all the water coming off the basketball courts, it's not gonna it's not gonna hold up. It's always gonna find a place to create a a gully or a washout. Oh. Is that the is that the area where you see that sort of it washes it's washed out pretty deeply down to some gravel? If, and, if you're, and, yeah, if if you're talking about where all the silt fence is still right now. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yes. and, and the soil is over one of them already. Yeah, it even if if he if he fixes one one area, it you know uh, um, when he did it last year, it would just go to another area. So it, all that water has to go somewhere when it comes off the basketball court. It's not, you know, it just has no place to go except right there, and it's it's always going to be a problem there. I'm yeah. surprised they didn't put a curb around the edge of the uh, basketball court, forcing the water down to the drain. It, yeah, because there's drains underneath the playground, but I don't, I, even then, that, that that might be a lot of water all at once. Well, it's just but a waste of hydro seed. Yep. Well, and is it so that you're having um, the landscape architect take a look at that to see what can be done as far as, I mean, obviously, even if they made some sort of a, you know, instead of that gully there, wash out some kind of official looking thing, then the water's got to go somewhere. So if even if it were made into some kind of a little half a culvert or whatever, and the water would still come down and pour onto Whittlesea. So it would have to come down and go to a catch basin or have a catch basin at the top where the water's directed. Something that, that's going to stop not just the washout from happening, but what, like you said, Ken, water's got to go somewhere. So I think it's got to be figured out a little differently. Yeah, so I, I, I started initial conversations. Ken sent me the pictures today of what's out there with Malone and McBroom. So I had to um, get back in touch with them. They emailed me back initially that um, the erosion control um, should be in place and get the grass fully established before we could make a full judgment on, on it. But I'll, I'll talk to them more and see um, what they have to say. Well, and that, I understand that makes the sense to, to get, you know, everything that the planning sort of in place, which is what would keep all that from happening. But every Correct. time they see that, it, it washes away. Right. So, so it's they, become they need to, right. They need to control the water while the grass is getting established. So, right. And is there possibly a way to do that with throwing some hay bales up along or something up along the edge so that the water gets diverted? Where is it going to get diverted to? Is it going to get diverted to another spot, which is going to wash out? Other, and, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I will get some recommendations from them and get them out to Ken as, as soon as possible. Because we did hey, actually. Joe, can, hey, Joe, so, can yeah, you also take a look? Sorry about that. <laughs> No, Roy, I was thinking about how we had some washout happen several times on that one slope at the police station. And once they kind of controlled yeah, it, it got, yeah. they used some hay bales oh. and some other stuff. But once they got the grass established and the mm -hmm. water, it goes down the hill, yes. And then it goes into a catch basin where it's supposed to and goes off into stormwater. Yeah. But it took a little bit of maneuvering to get to make sure right. silt wasn't running down and make sure water wasn't running down uh, too much. Because it really right. actually washed, it washed away like about six inches of grade down into this area of a catch basin, which filled up the catch basin. So that had to get cleaned out. And um, so if, you, if, if that's a start of how can we redirect the water for now until it gets established? Uh, right. no, I think, even I think Joe's might have some. I think Joe's got a valid point. I, I do think once yeah. it got established, it's probably going to be okay. But uh, yeah. You know they got to get it established, but the uh, mm -hmm. hey Joe, could you also just take a look in general on the slopes as far mm -hmm. as what we're talking about, as far as the uh, the, the uh, workmanship and what we what we should be expecting because that that really last year when Earth Movers leveled it off, 
it was very rough. And I expected that they were going to, you know, either rake it or at least, you know, knock it out in the springtime. Right, do a final grading. Exactly. And nothing has been and I, I really think the workmanship is very subpar uh, to what we should expect uh, on that. But uh, I, I'd really like to get another opinion. Of it. Yeah, we, I've, and, the, and Rake, go ahead, Joe. I was right. going to say, I was, I've, I've scheduled Malone and McBroom to do their final punch listing uh, next week, end of next week. Okay. If, if you could have a look at that, I'd also appreciate if they would look at the front slope on the uh, parking lot, uh, you know, where the uh, the parent drop off was. That right. slope has multiple uh, multiple steps in it. I'm going to say, you know, and I I I did envision. I kind of envisioned where they where they hooked up to the existing slope. There's like a two or three foot platform there or plateau. Mm -hmm that, uh, you know, it, it just, there's, there's, you know, it, it just very, it looks very sloppy in general. So I expect it to be a kind of a continuous slope. So I would like them to also take a look at that as far as what the plans were showing. Okay. And, and the other thing is there's some, uh, there's some manholes that are sticking up probably in the area of a foot to foot and a half above the grade. Uh, I would have expected those to be flush with the grades. They, they did those on Saturday. Did they? Okay, yes. good, Ken. Because I, I didn't notice that today. I, did, I didn't specifically look at that. Okay, so we got some uh, checking going on as far as either temporary erosion control while the grass gets established or, and I think that that is right, having that first step done um, before we do something uh, more drastic, which might not be necessary. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, so with, let's stick with Rockwell. Um, so Ken's little report has a number of things completed. The question I have uh, is, I think you said last time, Ken, the roof was complete. They were just still having to get some of their materials off, et cetera. But, yes. Yeah, okay. okay. And then um, how about the boiler room pipe supports? Is, is that been started yet? Is that, because um, you had said you had the materials in place. We, we have someone coming out tomorrow morning to take a look at it so that we can uh, see if they can do it and get started. So this is someone that would be doing the installation? Yes. But it wouldn't be the plumber put the pipes there to begin with? Uh, no. Will, will, will Matt be out there to meet him? Uh, yeah, we'll, be, we'll, we'll probably both be out there, definitely. OK. And as far as Rockwell, uh, um, like how's the punch list coming along, things getting completed, et cetera? Uh, yes, they had. Um, six or seven guys there last night doing um, tiles. Um, when, when there was a punch list from the principal, there was a, some tiles listed in the bathroom. So we went and we looked at all the bathrooms and we didn't you know, try to identify whether it was post-construction or whatever. If there was a crack tile, we went ahead and uh, fixed it. Uh, they're over at Johnson right now fixing a few tiles tonight. But um, other patching of uh, some, you know, holes here and there took place. Um, so, yeah, there, yes, there, there are um, things being taken off the, the punch list. And how do we look as far as, like, are there... I don't know if you call them punch list items, but items on the uh, either building inspector or fire marshal list that um, need to be worked out and are being completed. We, we've we completed that list for both schools and Chris wants to um, just go through it again to just check off everything. There's a couple items on there that were change orders that we've, we've uh, you know, we did get the uh, PCO 
basically electrical for hold open at Rockwell and moving a exit sign on the second floor. So, um, you know, as soon as we get those, we, we can proceed with that work. So, so he wants to, Chris wants to do kind of like a walk around with you or someone to go through the list and check things off to make sure they're, and he'll inspect to make sure they've been completed? Yes. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any other questions yeah. or things about Rockwell? Rockwell. I do, Nancy. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, Ken, do you know when the um, when the fence is going to go up around the chillers? So we've got the joint check agreement and um, the check is going out to the company. And I, I don't have the ship date, but I mean, they have the materials. So it's it's not like it has to be made, but I don't have the exact date for you, Bob. Okay. Okay. Anything else on Rockwell that anybody has questions? question? As construction goes. Okay, so now we've got the little report there from Johnson. Okay, so if the landscaper has been hydro seeding, did the softball field, the uh, bank, and um, he's been continuing rem removing screenings and topsoil uh, as the weather permits. The problem is when we get a good rain. It's, it's it's just like it's all muddy for a day or two even. So um, that's the problem. He's back to hauling some of the uh, tailings off tomorrow. So that's our biggest sticking point right now is the topsoil. Um, we have, the, um, we've got rid of a thousand yards and we've got about four to yards left to take out. Um, dumpster enclosure gates were completed. Uh, the ADA walk to the field is now ready for paving. And then the soccer field is part of uh, the delay is due to the rain and getting, we have to get rid of that topsoil. And that's that's been our biggest hurdle back there is finding a uh, Places that'll take it and get enough trucks to haul it out. The, hey, Ken. Um, yes. Hey, Ken. I, I see they were doing some cutting there where they're going to be extending the field there. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Is, is some of that material going to be used for that or are they actually going to haul in some different material? They, they had um, brought in some fill. Okay. And, and you know, because the problem is if, if you build up the topsoil too thick, you, you'd have like a, a soft end on your field. So um, the thought was not, not to, you know, have a deep pocket of topsoil and then have problems with the field because it won't drain. Um, okay. But that's not going to be any change order or anything, is it? Or what, what was the status on that? No, he's... he's, he's okay. He's, he's moving. He's able to find a home for it, and move it out. It's just that they um, need, need to be able yep. to have the trucks available. Okay. Yeah. No. Just I, I just wanted to just didn't want to be surprised later. But that okay. uh, softball field, as far as the bank that they uh, hydro seeded and took care of, I thought that came out very well. The grade the grade seemed to work out very well from the dumpster pad down. It did look good. Yeah. That 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 was a good move. Yeah, that came out good. So um, mm -hmm. Bob and I were, as I said, Bob and I were out there today meeting with Eileen Earl. Questions about both the softball field and the soccer field. Yeah. And so we actually have a few items that we want to bring up. And knowing that we might not be able to um, resolve them right here, um, they're things that need to be dealt with. So, and um, Roy saying about we see we saw that the hydro seeding had been done, especially you know all along that bank and then um, along the other kind of like well there's that path that goes down into left field that was a gravel path that I believe is going to be put back as it was and that's how she gets her mowers down in there. 
Is that gravel, Nancy, or are they going to actually pave that? I was going to question no, that. Too. No, that's not getting paved. That's, that was gravel. Really? I, I believe it was gravel, and it's going to go back to being gravel. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So is it just like it is now, just process, or are they actually going to put crushed stone on it? Or what? what is, is that the finished product, what we're looking at? I believe it's just processed. Yeah. Yeah, it's so not finished. It. It's not finished the way it is. There's more that oh. needs to go in. Okay. Well, that's what yeah. I'm asking. Oh, he he probably have to dress it up. Yeah, it's, it's at the top there. But it but it's just process, Nancy. I think that I think what you're seeing there is basically the finished product, which I believe is the what it was product. before. So, is there any way that we could just have them pave that? I don't know as we would want to pave it. it so it'll, here's, inter, it'll introduce water down into that left field. Yeah, I know. I still think you're going to water there anyways, but it's just, yeah. I don't know. I'm just, just asking. Yeah. So, so there's, there's something, there's a couple things going on there that we need to consider as we look at finishing that whole softball field area. So, um, the the way the bank is it's much it is much steeper than it was before on, along the left field side and and because which you know you kind of forget that two or so years ago the whole the bus loop and everything was was back further so the slope was more gentle because the the driveway the walkway everything was back towards the school more so we right. pushed all that towards the field, it makes that bank a little steeper, um, but it's better than it was. So, you know, in, in moving the dumpster pad, I think we've, we've gained a lot from it. But it, it also, there's a number of things that, that were part of the old field that we need to, um, to, to look So There was originally a pad there that had these kind of portable aluminum bleachers on them. And they were up in that corner Kind of where that gravel down left field gravel thing it was up up there so people could like park right near there just go over the walkway and and sit in that area people that couldn't get down onto the bank or anywhere else to sit and watch the game so eileen still has those um portable aluminum bleachers that she puts away every winter and we need to create a place to put them that's close enough so people don't have to so it's not like the ADA walkway that goes down to the dugout. This is a place for spectators to be. And Bob was bringing in that um, they have a guy that comes out and checks stuff. And it's not what he thinks is ADA compliant. You get. You want, you want me to add something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you look directly at the dumpster on the right hand side of the dumpster, there's an area that I feel that when you pave that, road that you're going to pave you put a little pavement on that spot uh so we could put the bleacher and we can put a spot for a wheelchair and attend it um we every uh year we have this gentleman coming out from the state of connecticut the office of civil rights and what they want to check is to make sure that there is handicap access for also not just the players or the um, uh, the you know the coach, but also for the spectators as well. And currently, right now, there's no place to put a wheelchair um, or a somebody who's in a walker or something like that. So having the bleachers and then having a small little area uh, paved would would satisfy that OCR, which is Office of Civil Rights um, complaint. So I can guarantee that complaint will come if we don't have one. Yep. So yeah, so the right of, to the right of the dumpster, it would have to get kind of leveled out and probably compacted somewhat, but paving that area there. And, and there's a couple other things we'll bring up. You know, we could meet out there if we needed to talk to whoever. Um, so a couple other things, um, the, the access way we see is ready to go. Um, Eileen, so Eileen get take always take her mowers down that gravel path 
Um, but she would also bring like every year, year and a half or so, the park and because Park and Rec uses that a lot after hours and not it's not just a school. You know, when Bob and I were there with Eileen, there was gym class happening out, out on the not on the softball on the diamond part because it was full of water, but on the grass part, there were kids out there having a gym class. So that whole area gets um, kind of upgraded and um, redone by Park and Rec every year or so, year and a half. She brings material and, and that slope coming down the gravel path used to be a lot less steep to be able to not just get her mowers down there, but get a tractor down there bringing material. So she's got a tractor with a bucket bringing a bucket of material, buckets, bucket after bucket of material down. It could be a little front heavy and she doesn't want to have that be an issue. So she's trying to figure out about, so she's going to have to resurface that field this year, you know, especially once you get um, finished with a lot of the stuff you're doing or that we're doing as part of the project. So way in the back of the soccer field, we saw trees that were cut down. And that whole area back there, we're wondering if that could be an access way kind of around the soccer field or through the soccer field and down. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining it right, Bob. Um, no, you, you are, but it, it'd be better if we someday all meet out there and, and actually take a look at it before, uh, you know, before we finalize anything out there. Well, definitely, because I'm just bringing these few things up and then we're going to have to look at it because if it's, if it's going to require some I think there are parts of it that need to be done that, that if we're bringing that back to what it was before the project started, that needs to be part of the project. If we're adding stuff that needs to be obviously considered as a, a change order. Um, just something that came up at the OAC meeting the other day, that scoreboard was functional before the project started. So there was conduit coming out of the old um, utility room and down to the um, first baseline dugout. And then there's a box in the first baseline dugout that then goes, there's a conduit that goes from there out along, you know, along that out of bounds first split baseline to the scoreboard. So whatever was dug up needs to get put back. So we're gonna to have to look at that. Yep. And then yep. just in general, looking at the soccer field. Um, so you're saying, Ken, that they're hauling topsoil out of there, partly because the topsoil is not appropriate fill for the soccer field. Uh, correct, we have enough topsoil put aside for, for the, um, you know, the final course of topsoil. So it's, mm -hmm. it's just excess from the two sites. Okay, and so there, you know, we noticed that there's a bunch of concrete, there's some trees that were cut down, et cetera. So all of that kind of like junk needs to get hauled off before they can really start grading in there and, and creating the soccer field. Correct. Okay. Do you and have an idea? You have an idea, Ken, when we can expect some of that to be out? Because now we have, you know, on the weekends we have people back there with. It's, it's tough to, to manage and it's tough to keep it safe. Um, I mean, during, during the day, we have the teachers there at least, but on the weekend, it, it's, it's, there's people everywhere. Yeah, the only, I, I, uh, I'm trying to get a handle of when we're going to be able to get rid of the last bit of this topsoil and um, he doesn't. He didn't know today if he'd be able to get trucks for the topsoil tomorrow. So that's kind of where it's been um, getting trucks to get rid of the topsoil. It's, it's, uh, if, if we had a home for it, we'd get rid of it all right, right now. Are, are uh, you gonna need some of that to fill in some of those washout areas? Yeah, yep. They'll need some of it for sure for that. So once they get that out, is there more fill that needs to be brought in for that soccer field or? No, they brought in, they brought in some subsoil for, for the back okay. already so where the trees are being removed. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I guess we should make a plan then. Um, we don't have to do it right now, but we should do it soon. You know, we can email each other, whatever. 
to meet out there so that we can look at um, the concerns and um, some of the stuff that's going to need to be completed as part of the project and the other things that are going to need to be added. So we should coordinate that with the Malona McBroom punch list visit at the end of next week because their input would be critical, you know, to understand what were, what were the what were the intentions when we started the project, but what do we need to do today to restore all those peripheral areas and I don't want to call them and have them come out a separate time so uh, okay. You know, if we can piggyback that visit, they could probably advise on some of these issues. And then, and then from there, we can make a decision on how far to take any um, sort of professional direction prior to making any changes. And would that give us enough time to get either changes in place or get information in place to keep earth movers kind of moving along? I mean, if it keeps raining, it's going to take forever, but... Um, you know, I don't want to hold earth movers up with trying to get some stuff done that they need to get done. Well, I mean, the whole point of Malona McRoom coming out is to punch list. So earth right. movers has to stick around and be available until after we see whether there is or what's on the punch list for site work and then have them right. you know, resolve those issues. So I think this okay. does tie into that. And then if, if there is additional work other than what we might consider punch list or related to the project, and since that's, that will be a separate arrangement that we'll have to, you know, make to, you know, based on their availability, so. Okay. Nancy? Uh, yep. So if I could for a moment, just reflect back on our discussions about the soccer field when we first decided to do something about it and recall that it was as hard as a rock and you could hear little kids stomping on it uh, because it was that hard. Uh, Ken's comments had to do with uh, bringing in some fill and then reducing the amount of topsoil. Are we making sure that we're going to keep it a soft field or at least a reasonably soft field? Yes. Yeah, they'll definitely have um, sufficient topsoil on the field, but if it doesn't drain, it, it, it'll always be a wet field. So yes, to answer your question. Thank you. And then the size, Eileen had asked the size, and I know we had a whole conversation back and forth last time about the size. And, and I remember it being 140 by 200, which I had written down and then I emailed Eileen just to verify, because that's what's on the plans. I pulled up the plans too, and I had sent her the plans. She just wasn't remembering. And um, she had some other questions, but that's all like the, was wondering if some of the light poles were gonna be in the way, how far towards the road and, and the back parking was the soccer field extending. And it, I mean, we weren't gonna go mucking through the muck and try to measure it all off, or, but I think it's gonna be back, now that I'm thinking about the size, I think it's gonna be uh, back farther. Yeah, and Nancy, uh, the size I think was um, with the extension would be the same size as it was previously. Right. That's what I think I remember we were talking about last time too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's I thought. okay size for little kids, but it's not an official soccer field, which would, if it were official soccer field, it would be between 100 and 130 yards long and 60 to 70 yards wide. And, it, and we're talking feet. Yes. I, yeah. thought it, I thought it complied with youth soccer. Yes. Dimensions, right? Not adult. Olympic. Right, yeah. right. Little, kid, yeah. little kid soccer field. Right. right. So, and Eileen did say that, you know, it's not a full size field like the one that they use um, up at the high school. So, but it's, they could have tournaments there, youth size, et cetera. Hey, Nancy, to Joe's yeah. comment, to yep. Joe's comment about it being the same size as it was, how could it be with that light pole there? Joe? That's a question. That's a question for Joe, I think. I'm, I'm trying to get the drawing open. Um, that, that's my understanding okay. is that they, the Malone McBroom made it the same size as it was. So it pushes back from where it originally was. And that's why it needs to be extended into the woods um, to make it the size that it was. Oh, I see what you mean. So it's yeah, so the it's same not, footprint. 
but it's just moved back farther. Correct. Okay. It's the same the same dimensions as it was previously, Got but it. it's shifted to the I guess that's the west. If I have my plan north correct. Okay. Northwest. Right, but, I think it, it is. but it's not it, the, the field itself hasn't moved towards the excess road. It's still the, the far end is still the far end, and so I think that I think if we look at it, you know, it, differently, Bob, like you were pointing out, Eileen how the softball field was measured and from home plate was 100, you know, there's 185 out to that um, right field fence. Um, that's a whole lot more than the 140 feet that the soccer field or the 200 that the soccer field is gonna be. Okay. So, uh, or not more than, but it's close to, but we can look at it when we're out there with all the people that are gonna be out there. So do we know the day that Malone and McBroom's coming or are you still working that out, Joe? Uh, it was going to be either the 20th or 21st. I haven't confirmed it with them yet. Okay, and you could let um, Bob and me and whoever else might need to know. Yeah. No? Okay. I will email you, Bob, and Geraldine. Yeah, sure. Okay. Good. And Ken, and, too. Yeah. So yeah, because Rizzo or somebody from Rizzo will be, need to be out there. And we noticed someone on the roof today, so I don't know what was going at Johnson. Didn't know it was roof. Didn't know the, who it was. List. Punch what list. was that? Punch list on the roof at Johnson. Yeah. Okay. So anything that's going on, like stuff, depending on where it is, um, some of it has to be done, like you were talking about, some of the stuff being done after hours, after school. Yes. Okay. Okay. So a one more punch list item, can the uh, sidewalk that uh, is closest to the uh, dumpster area where the trucks have been driving over it, hauling the material out, basically the sidewalk that crosses the driveway is, is fairly well broken up. Uh, I'm assuming that's gonna have to be re-poured. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. That, that's been broken for a while. So anybody have anything else, questions on either school as far as construction goes? Anything that was kind of hanging out there in your head that you wanted to check in and get an update? I'm good. We're good? Okay. Um, so technology update, Geraldine, is there anything new that we need to know? No, they're working through some punch list issues. The remaining wireless access points, all of the exterior wireless access points are scheduled to go in next week. Um, security work is, I think, 100% at Johnson, but um, they're still working on some doors that were late finishing at Rockwell. And of the audio visual package, um, there are, I think there are, you know, three visual display boards at Johnson and a couple at Rockwell that aren't showing up on the, on IT's um, remote management system. So ESC is working through uh, commissioning those items. But I think in general, we're, we're pretty much complete. Um, it's really just punch list issues and the schools are fully functional. Uh, except for these, you know, a handful of minor issues, as far as I know. I know the, the um, lobby guard uh, system is in place, um, although not, maybe not yet functioning, Bob, but, um, but that additional work has been done. Um, so I think we're in pretty good shape with technology. The lob, in reference to the lobby guard, um, I, <coughs> excuse me, uh, IT is currently building some of the, um, format that we add on to lobby guards, such as parental rights and things like that. So each school has additional work being done right now on it, but the actual raw program is on there now. And uh, so IT right now is, is doing all that behind the scenes stuff, but it's not ready to go hot yet. So is there any more technology stuff? Cause I just, yeah. Um, 
kind of going back to, you know, we did a construction progress update, but we didn't get a schedule update. So Ken, I mean, it's almost the middle of May, which is kind of when we were saying that even site work, we were planning on paving it, at, at, you know, mid-May when we were talking about it, but we're almost there. And obviously we're not anywhere near getting that done. I understand about the rain and um, it, it sounds like at least for the soccer field and that whole back area, it's a combination of rain and wet, being able to get equipment in there. And, and um, you're saying trucks to haul the topsoil, but it's kind of a combination of trucks to haul the topsoil and a place to put the topsoil. Yes. That, yeah, okay. So uh, is we there have any a, chance that Eileen could use some of the topsoil for her field? If, is there a corner we can put it? I don't know if she's gonna need topsoil. The, 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 so the part that she needs you to take care of is kind of along that grassy left field area. Some of the, where, where a lot of the stuff, the sediment actually washed into some little small flat piles. There's no grass growing there. That's got to get scraped back and topsoil needs to be put there so grass can grow there. If you have a grassy outfield. Um, the, the, the actual diamond, she needs to bring in um, other, it, it's not topsoil that she uses there. She uses other stuff. Clay, she uses clay. So that's what she's going to be bringing in to build that field back up, the, you know. Okay. The field gets compacted down, the clay gets, then. so she's got, you know, like I said, every year when she brings stuff in, mostly what she's bringing in is clay. Okay. And um, I, I can ask her if she needs topsoil anywhere else or if anybody else needs topsoil somewhere. And we've had that question now, yeah, probably this will be the fourth yeah. time. Yeah. So it's, should we put a big sign up at the bottom of the driveway, free topsoil? <laughs> bring, your own, bring your own shovel and bucket. <laughs> But I'll, I'll ask Sybil, I'll ask Eileen, I'll ask anybody that, you know, but we'll check again. So we're looking at, do you have some sort of projection for us, please? I, I, I don't have that right now because of last week's rain. We were expecting to get it out last week. So, I, you know, I'm hoping that we can get it out by the end of next week and then get the field put together. I mean, once he gets in there, it's not going to take him a long time to, to do the field. It's just getting in there so that he can he can start. And is that like, like the biggest part, kind of biggest hold up for getting things done? It, it is because it's 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 going to be in the way and it, you, you know, without moving it, you know, you, you can't you can't start stripping and moving everything because you'll never get to the pond. So, so site work is is sort of its own thing right now because of weather. But I think there are two other things that that we need to talk about in terms of schedule. And one is, um, well, they're both. It's it's really punch lists. So, when might you be out of the interiors of the building because punch list is finished? And secondly where are we at with punch list on the roof and what's the schedule to actually get us off the roof because that plays into the whole um you know solar project issue so i think those are the those are really the three areas that i think we need to pay attention to in terms of schedule site work roof and then finishing the interior punch lists so i i think the johnson roof will be if it's not done tomorrow It'll be done this week so that they can get the, the um, final warranty from the manufacturer. Right. And then for uh, Rockwell, I'm, I'm hounding him for this davit that he's got to put in. And he, and he wants to do everything, you know, all at once because he only has a little bit left out there to do. So I am working to get him out there, finish so that we can get that warranty and be done be done with that roof at Rockwall. And since Geraldine brought up the solar project, um, I had mentioned at the OAC meeting that uh, Bill Craddy wanted to talk to me, so he did call. He's looking for as built of the roof. So my question is, do we have? as builds and are they being filed with the building department 
which seems to be where they would go to. So they have them and know that they're done. I mean, where do they go? Where do they usually go? The owner. Right. They so, start, um, start with, you know, the architect, like the design team needs to review them. And I think, right, right we haven't seen those yet. No, we haven't submitted the uh, roof as belts yet, except, yeah, we haven't submitted. We and did it, submit some plumbing as belts. Okay. And basically, I think what they're looking for is, is the structure of the roof. Right. And I, I can I can send that um, along as far as the uh, shop drawings because um, it's not different. It wouldn't be any different than, than the approved shop drawings. Well, that would be great. If you okay. want to, I guess, send them to me. OK. And I could forward them to Craddy. Um, he keeps bringing up the, the pipes hanging from the trusses at Rockwell. And I kept trying to explain to him that that's on the lower roof. Why would you put the solar panels on a low? He doesn't know where the panels are going. He just needs the whole entire roof so they can do calculations, et cetera. We should, Nance, we, sh we, we should be able to give you the shop, uh, the as-builts for the ductwork on the roof. That shouldn't, that's not a big ask. Um, the, the, the existing steel, we have those 1970 drawings. We can certainly forward them to him. That's really what he, that's really what you have because so much, especially Rockwell is, was existing school. Right. Right. And that's, that's what I tried to explain to him because I was telling Bob that I've been um, actually having to go through old meeting minutes, looking for some info on police station project and um, municipal center project. And I ran into like two years ago, Craddy coming to a meeting and us giving him the structure of the build, both buildings of Johnson existing and then Johnson addition and then Rockwell existing. And I, mean, I don't I know why they- I, I gave it to him recently. I'm, I mean, within the last couple of months. I, I, right, it was just a couple of months ago, Joe, you sent me a link, I downloaded them. I said, you know, they, they, they have the structure drawings. Right, they do. Okay. That's and, what and, they need. And then I, also, need then I also spent a good day walking them on that roof on both schools to include the track house and they he had his little drawing and he was mapping out how many panels they're going to connect together and how long the run was going to be so they had an actual hand drawing i don't get it <laughs> well i will oh. say that my correspondence was not with bill craddy it was with the i don't even the remember guy. you know the, the actual solar guys you right know? his name is right. adam yeah right and that's what i thought um so I will email Mr. Craddy and remind him of all of this. And if, because I don't think we need to give them, you know, like what Jim said, I don't think we need to give them the roof layout of the ductwork and all that. They have to come and look at it. You know, you can give them that, but, but it's not going to be exact. They need to come and, and they need to do some structural calculations about loads. So they need this structure, which if, you gave them, I'll remind him that you gave them. And as far as where, because I said to Craddy, where, where are you going to put the panels? Why would you put them on a lower roof? Wouldn't you put them on an upper roof? He goes, well, I don't know where exactly where they're going. They have to figure that out. So I'm like, what do you really need? I don't really know. Well, so, I, I'll, the as built to the ductwork definitely will help them as a start. So they, they do have to go look at right. it and kind of map things out, but at least they would have some background on what, what roof is available. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and okay, they're, they're so, also going to have to leave pathways to get to the equipment. They can't just <clears throat> fire a roof with PV right, and not be able to get right, there. Right, right. A lot of duck work up there. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially at Rockwell. Well, yeah. and there's big chunks of it at Johnson, too. And, and don't forget, and they, they, have to, they have to pipe all this stuff back to the yeah. electrical room. Yeah. Yep, yeah. They need to go there and figure it out. But so, Gerilyn, you communicated with the um, solar guys. Yeah, I can dig that email back up. But but I can, if I need it, I'll tell you. I will tell Craddy that you sent that stuff. Yep. And then 
do we want Jim Delaney to give us, you know, if you've got as built of the roof duct work and stuff like that, we'll send that along too and say here. Yes, I mean, we, the project, okay. the owner is owed those as built anyways. If we can accelerate the, the rooftop as the rooftop equipment, the as built of the rooftop equipment, that would be a nice good faith effort to the folks doing the solar project. And then, you know, then they could start working. And um, most solar companies, okay. use, they use Google Earth and they could scale a roof. Yep. I know. Right from the satellite. They don't go shifting around plans. Yeah, exactly right. Google Earth it. You know, we can't get wrapped up too much in let's finish our own project and mm -hmm. what do we start? I with? agree. Well, they, John, hey, project. John, last Friday they had the pre construction uh, meeting at the track house for those panels. And what the uh, contractor told me is that he's going to assemble them on the ground and then cherry pick them up and set them on the roof. So, and so I asked him, I said, is this going to be the same process you're going to do at the school? And he, he said, yeah. So I said, well, we're going to have to know about cranes, their placements, yeah. time of the day you're going to do it. You know, it, it has to be well planned. And, but Mr. Craddy, nice guy and everything, but he's not too forthcoming with information sometimes until the last minute. And I told him, I said, we don't operate that way. I says, I'll yeah. turn your crane around and get him off the property if I have to. Right. So I, I made it pretty clear to him. Well, and they have to with a crane, especially certain size cranes. We mm -hmm. had to pick something into the third floor of the library when we finished. We had to pick equipment into the third floor of the library. We had to bring the crane in at, two, at four o'clock in the morning to get it there. Mm -hmm. And then we had to close the library and school street down for a period of time while they picked the thing in. And then the crane had to sit there till I don't know, midnight, and then they drove the crane away. You know, certain size cranes, you can't just go driving down the road in. Right. Or so, show yeah. up on a property. No. Mm. No. Well, we'll give them a few things and then tell them they're on their own or something like that. All right. <clears throat> so thank you. Thank you for that. Um, the boiler room project. So there's been some stuff going on. And John Menti has been the contact person for that, but he's not able to be here tonight. He, I asked him for a report and he kind of sent me an email, which wasn't as specific as I needed it to be. But, but basically, and um, Geraldine's been included on some of this too, so she can add in. Um, so the report came back to Weston and Sampson from the e EPA person asking for, in, in very specific places, more information. So we're in the process of getting some of that information together. Some of it, I think, is, is them not understanding um, some of the areas that are being discussed. So we're talking about the boiler room and then they're talking about the loading dock as being the room when the loading dock is new. So that's got it. There's, they're trying to figure that out and make them understand that part. Um, John is in the process of trying to get uh, a time to come in and do some testing. So Bob, we may need to, I don't know if we need to do it for you. They need to do some more testing in certain spots. And it'll be easy to get done on a Saturday. He said it's not a long involved process. And it's also not something, and I think we discussed this maybe the last time, is not something that require a huge amount of containment and air quality checks afterwards. They can contain the small area while they're doing the test. Is that, am I correct on that, Geraldine? Is that? It's correct, and there's no, and, and as, we, as we've talked about before, there is no, there are no good right regulations for um, testing while people are in the building. Basically, you can do whatever you want. So, but I know that Christine expressed an interest in having it done when kids are not in the building. So that would be a weekend, but there's no, it, it's not as highly regulated as asbestos. So, will, will there be anything in writing saying? They did. They performed this at a certain date and time, just in case we ever have to go back. I would yeah. hope so. But I, yeah. I mean, much like the other testing that we did, I think it'll be very similar. You know, they'll Malcolm will engage, whether it's somebody at his firm or a third party, to d go in and do the same kind of testing. They've got to drill into the concrete, right? They've got to, you know, test the levels as to see how what if anything has leached into the concrete. Um, and then clean it all up and, you know, and be done, so. 
And then the other thing they've asked for, I, I believe, were um, manifests of what's been kind of cleaned out and removed so yeah. that they have some. So I have that. I haven't, I have, all, I have the waste manifests. I haven't gone through them yet because I'm not looking forward to going through all that paperwork. <laughs> I have, I, I, I probably should either connect with John or have John put me in touch with Malcolm so that I can figure out exactly what he's looking for. If it's just, you know, the, just the boiler room. Well, we didn't really do anything in the boiler room. I got to find out what he, what he needs or, or okay. And right. over the entire school's worth of, of hazardous waste manifests, but I don't want to do that. And, and well, do you want to have Weston and Samson look through all of them? Well, and then, well, that could be, yeah, yeah. But well, you guys, you, all right, so you'll talk about that. I have the inf I have documents I need to connect with them about what they really need, right? And and then they asked about what's what's the flooring right outside the boiler room, and was that tested before it was done? But that's yeah. not. Oh, I don't think is it so right outside the boiler room I, I was looking at the drawings today it's is that existing terrazzo or is that exposed concrete that was sealed I mean it's one or the other it's terrazzo it's, it's terrazzo yeah. that's what I thought. so there's been no abatement there and there would right. not be any and there was no testing there and, right. and just to piggyback what, what Nancy said I think part of the part of the difficulty that I, what I, what I think is the difficulty is that the, the report that um, Weston and Sampson did is of, is just isolated to the boiler room. And it's not clear from their information that anything else has been done in the school. So some of these questions, I mean, this is the last piece of the project and everything else has been abated. And I'm not sure that that was clear in the initial write-up. And so I think that that's why the EPA is looking to expand outside of the boiler room. Whereas maybe if we could just give them all the information that shows everything everything else has been dealt with, we're just right. with this last little piece. Right, because they were asking about the electrical room in this room and they wanted a floor plan. And then, and Geraldine sent a few things to John to send to Malcolm. Um, but again, I think it's just a misunderstanding of the step-by-step -step process that's already happened and this is the last piece. So we'll be more in touch with update but we'll be you know work have john and gerald and malcolm work through a lot of this stuff to get it moving along and then um i guess john and malcolm should be in touch with bob about getting um some testing scheduled on you know either after school because i think it's only a couple hours or on a weekend and simply okay i think that's about it for that part that you would all need to know about um, I'm just going down the, bill, the bullets here, federal tax credits. Were we going to talk about that later, like separately or? Um, no, well, no. I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, this would be the time if you wanted to, to talk about it again. Yeah. So Geraldine sent out a um, kind of so, uh, something that she put together looking at the yep. tax credits. Yep. And she's putting it up on screen now if you need to take a look. So just briefly, um, the direction was to, to put in front of you some numbers related to the HVAC system, the controls, just some, and so I just extracted a bunch of cost numbers. No, no evaluate, no real evaluation, no recommendation, just so that you understand the value of some of the service that was done. And I will start with the bottom of this sheet, which is the, the um, potential value of the tax deduction in total. So I had misspoke on some of my descriptions earlier. While there is a dollar eighty per square foot available, it is the the um, tax deduction is divided into three parts and only one of them has to do with HVAC energy efficiency. And the maximum one, the maximum tax deduction one could qualify for would be 60 cents a square foot. So in very, very total broad numbers at Johnson, it's worth a little over 51,000 and at Rockwell, it's worth almost 30,000 um, as a tax deduction to someone in total. That's the total value of, of the energy efficiency on the HVAC system. So 
um, the ask from ESC would be to assign to them some percentage of, this, of these totals as a tax deduction, 100% being these numbers. Now, in terms of what ESC has spent relative to other um, either design services or other uh, construction you know, values of the HVAC work, I, I just put together a, you know, a few things up here up above. The entire value of the contract to action air for all HVAC work, you can see at Johnson it's you know six million and at Rockwell it's three million. That's everything. So that's all the new HVAC equipment, distribution systems, control systems, everything. Now ESC was working as a sub to action air to design and install the control system. Which is so. This is really where I think ESC is looking for their contribution to the project. Now, ESC's total cost for engineering, so designing the control system, providing the hardware, installing the hardware, and then programming the control system, um, totaled these two amounts. So at Johnson, seven hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars, and Rockwell, five hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars. And another way that I thought one could look at it is just with the uh, with ESC's cost of engineering, because theoretically, these tax deductions are allowed, um, as I said earlier, as a way to encourage the design and inclusion of energy saving systems within a project. So, um, so if we just looked at the design and the, the design engineering alone for the control systems. Um, We'll skip down a paragraph here. And ESC's engineering fees alone at Johnson were 56.5 and at Rockwell were 48,000 just to design the systems. And I only include that information right above that, trying to make a comparison between what DTC might have, you know, what, what was the total value of design um, from the actual consultant engineers versus the design of the control system. So these are all just numbers that you can consider. Um, as a way of evaluating whether um, what portion of this tax deduction one might want to allocate to them. It, at the most, at 100%, it would be these numbers, 51,000 and 29,000. Um, right. If it's, if it's, um, if it, it, but it could be less. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and in a way, making a, a decision to give them less could be based on if three or four other people were looking for the deduction. So then you might have to try to allocate it um, percentage wise as to what percent of, let's say if DTC wanted some, you know, whoever did the design, the designs for the different programs might want a cut, but we're not getting that. So it almost would be easier if other people were asking for a part of this of a, a part of this tax deduction program, right? Because then, yes, you would be you would be assigning it relative to something else. But you know, do we know. have to allocate it, or can we ask Action Air to allocate it to themselves and their subcontractors? Well, you can't get Action Air involved because they didn't ask for it. Yeah, you yeah, can't you ask can't them to do anything. They're not the yeah. ones for the system. No, no it's asking for the tax deduction. Well, they so th that's where it gets complicated. They could be. I mean, Actionaire could be asking for a part of it. DTC could be asking for a part of it. Perkins Eastman could be asking for a part of it. Um, we already had a request from Ferguson for for part of it. You know, there are there are many people that might be. There are many firms that might be considered as contributing to the energy efficient design of the project. Problem is, we've only got one of them before us, and we can't go. So, Dave, to answer your question, we can't go to them and say, "Do you want some of this?" Because that's not how no. it works. I think yeah. they have to come to you. Well, we have, have to ask them two questions: Do they want some of it, yeah. <laughs> and are they willing to give you anything for it? <laughs> that's silly. But ESB was ESB yes. a subcontractor to Actionaire? Yes, for the control system. Yes, okay. which and is what qualifies ESC, for this tax deduction. ESC has asked for some of this uh, tax credit. We yes. can't say they asked for some of it. We and never has and asked them 
what they base their five thousand dollars on that they offered us. We, we can't because they never set a percentage, and we said we weren't going to contact them until we all discussed it. Now, did they base their? I don't know. Did they base the five thousand on getting the the fifty one and twenty nine? I I don't have that answer. Yeah, and I don't think that they can okay. ask. So when they present that document to the town, it is really up to the town, the owner in this case, to determine an allocation. Because also ESC would have no way of knowing whether anybody else had asked for a piece of this either. Um, but yes, I think the, the key, the, the thing that I should have added on is that ESC has offered the town a $5,000 credit for future work, future maintenance work or future future work um, in return for an allocation. But yes, we don't know what they thought they were going to get in return for the 5,000. Are we able to allocate yes. that, those bottom line numbers to the, different subcon to the different contractors based on the value of their work? Well, that would be one way of doing it, um, I, but I, you know. And then if they ask for it, that's what we give them. If they don't ask for it, we keep it. That's one way of looking at it. And it wouldn't be Actonair because they didn't do the design stuff. It would be DTC who did the design. Is it design? Is it just design? Yes. Because it's not the installation. Ferguson asked for it. They didn't do the design. They did the installation. Is that no correct? money for Ferguson? None. Well, yeah, that was a whole different, you know, story. Yeah. Um, Here's the other thing that I, I and, and I don't know because I'm not, you know, I know a lot about this, but of all the years I've spent on the board, there's been tax credits somewhere. Nobody has ever approached us. Nope. So, and that includes the energy conservation that we did at the library. That includes the yeah. energy conservation conservation that we did at the police station. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly, the high school that I was somewhat involved <laughs> the first selectman came in, new first selectman. So I, I don't I don't know, is it dollar for dollar? What do they have to do on their end? Doesn't it seem kind of odd if there was this much money available for them that nobody ever approached us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But that but the secret be in what qualifies? Schools are not commercial buildings, are they? Well, they well they are. So they are. It is a commercial building, and it is. If you read the bottom paragraph under public building, oh, public buildings. Okay. Because the because the municipality can't use it, there are no taxes due, and that that the municipality may allocate the deduction to the designers. But it could be anybody you consider having designed a portion of the energy saving system. So, so we just give it all to Joe Collada. So, well, he hasn't offered us anything. Well, we haven't asked for it. It's not about, yeah, it's about asking. It's, it, I think that that's the key. I think that I think there are plenty of firms that may qualify for it, but are not really set up to accept that deduction and then use it on their tax returns. And as Dave said, there is a, um, there is a cost to doing this because the documentation of the energy efficient of the energy savings has to be done by a 30, third party contractor. And I'm sure that those folks who are utilizing the deduction are paying for that third party contractor. I don't know what those costs are. Is that like an auditor or is that a contractor? But somebody who does this work. Yeah, it's somebody who does it, this, the some, work this regularly. This kind of work. Well, is that's how. The, is it the energy modeler? No. So we got we were con the town was contacted by I'd have to go back in my emails to look by an independent firm that was working with um, ESC and Ferguson, both of them, to figure out the qualifications and to do the figure production thing. Oh. I didn't want to sneeze at you guys. So, sorry. and Joe, I think at the end of the day, it isn't. They're, they're doing energy modeling. They're taking the exit. They're they're looking at what was installed, 
they're looking at what was specified, they're comparing it to whatever the code, they, they, they're doing the modeling and then they're looking at the code and they're saying, is it this, you know, what, what tier of reduction are you getting? And it's, you know, it's probably, it's similar, but there are also firms that are specifically set up not only to do that energy modeling, but to develop the documentation that these firms need to put in their file for, you know, when the IRS comes calling and asks them to justify the deduction that they took. So it's a, and it's a service that they sell. I mean, they probably, this, these companies go out and market it to folks like ESC and Ferguson and probably, you know, companies like Action Air, who knows, you know, anybody that's on that side. Right. It's kind of like so, grant, write, grant writers and grant administrators who get a cut of whatever grant you get. Right. And the bigger ones probably are more able to take advantage of this <laughs> and are used to taking advantage of this tax deduction. So they're set up for it, you know. So, Geraldine, if, if we had taken the, uh, you know, let's go to the bottom of your value there, where you say the maximum tax deduction for the HVAC says some 60 cents per square foot. So if we had taken, and, and we just, let's just say we gave them, we said, okay, we'll give you the 51 and the 29, even though your, your uh, engineering fees are the 56 and 48, so we're below the amounts. If, uh, let's just say uh, Action Air came back to us and said, you know, we'd also like to apply for that. Uh, based okay. upon that, scenario is it 60 cents in total Carolyn for for let's say all those controls or is, or is that just you know that section I don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot I, I if we're going to look at this I would like to look at it fairly so, so the 60 someone... cents is the total that's available for the entire pro for the project Okay, for the, that's for the entire project. Right. So, okay. if, yeah. yeah, so if you allocate 100% of that to ESC, you preclude yeah, somebody else from ever having a piece of that. Yeah, so that, okay. No, I just I just wasn't too sure if that was just allocated just to that, you know, yeah. that uh, yeah. profession per se. For the whole okay. building, for Johnson, that's the whole building. And the six okay. cents is a maximum. So we won't know, we don't necessarily know what they're going to actually qualify for at the end of the evaluation. Right. All I'm saying is we're going to give them a hundred percent of whatever that third-party engineering firm determines is right. the, the correct value because I think the sixty cents is also prorated based on whether they're and, and these are not the numbers but like fifty percent below the current code rating twenty percent below da 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 that's why the analysis is done because right. I think that there are different tiers but if it if we've got the maximum energy efficiency um, and somebody takes 100% of that tax deduction allocation, those are the numbers. Okay, 1.3, so, okay. Just to, uh... So what do you think in there, Roy? No, I was just thinking, uh, you know, it, I was just globally looking at the uh, the 750,000, you know, the total amount in the 500, so you have a million two, a million three into the total project. You know, what percent would that be? What would be allocatable per se if you just wanted to pick on that section, you know, to the total project? Right. That, would, that would be, in my mind, a fairer scenario. Mm-hmm. But again, we have to go back and realize that that Action Air themselves, as the installers, wouldn't be available to take a tax deduction. Right, right. No, but I was just looking at the uh, ESC costs for the controls. You right. know, it, I, I and I'm going to say it's was it somewhere around 1.3 mil in total mm -hmm. into this yeah. 60 mil, right, or or whatever it might be. Yeah, uh, and I think I it's. Know. It's only the engineering fees or the design fees that are deductible, right. correct? Well, it's not, you know, there's no requirement for them to correlate yeah. the tax deduction to any of these numbers. It, Got it. It's uh, an exercise on our end to figure out what might be. Um, it's fair, right? 
fair or idea. Or it might only be, you know, you know, it might yep. only be five percent of the project cost, you know, of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, so if it's five percent of the total tax tax uh, uh, deductions, that number is going to come down considerably. I mean, that was if everyone came up, came back looking for, you know, for some of that credit. Right. Okay. Um, so we're, do we want to, this isn't something, again, we have to make a decision on immediately, but we ought to keep it in the forefront so that we don't get too far along and kind of forget about it. Yep. We could discuss it as a subcommittee. We could, I mean, I, it, it might be better to have more members available um, when we do make a decision. So we should make sure everybody understands yep. this. Yeah. Does anybody have any other questions on it? Or Geraldine, do you have anything else we should know about this? Okay. Budget review. Woohoo. All right, budgets. Let's see. At Johnson. So we plot along every every month. We we tick away at another percent or two. Um, so as we usually review, we are invoiced to 89% of the total project cost at Johnson. And again, the reason that's lower than what you'll see at Rockwell is because there is a significant construction, con I mean, owner's contingency still available, 1.45 million. Um, construction alone, before tonight, we're going to look at uh, obviously another application for payment for, um, for construction, but prior to booking that, we are 93% uh, complete of, on construction. Um, so this, this does not include tonight's application for payment. Uh, this is what's been approved to date. Great, okay. And so similarly at Rockwell, We're at 92% of the total project in terms of invoiced um, expenses, 93% um, again, build out uh, of construction uh, and uh, we're currently $500,000 in the red on the contingency at Rockwell. And in combination and in concert here, looking at total values and contingency, um, just going right to the bottom line, we're currently uh, tracking only at $410,000 under total budget for both projects combined. You see the, the two contingencies um, netting out here, 950, but we are looking at it. Um, uh, we are looking at about $539,000 or $540,000 worth of potential additional cost. Um, on both projects combined. So we have some PCOs we're going to look at tonight. There are some PCOs still pending review um, uh, that, that will still come to you in the future. Uh, we have some uh, PCOs not yet with a value on them, but that we know that we are expecting to expend some money against. We have additional fee requests that, are, um, that I'm currently booking against remaining contingency. Um, as well as some additional project scope um, that we have. Some of these actually uh, did come in in terms of quotes and invoices. We will be talking about like the washers and the dryers um, a little bit later, but um, those, those items are still to be decided as well as the total cost of the abatement of the boiler room floor. But if all of that ends up being rolled into this project, um, today we are still looking at um, being about four hundred and ten thousand dollars under the total budget. Yeah, but we're whittling it. Thanks, Dave. But we're whittling, whittling it down. You know, um, getting closer and closer here. But we are getting closer to the end, so that also is good. Awesome. Anybody have any questions on budget stuff? I think we got to think we got to get start a little cautious on what we approve for PCOs because I'll tell you four ten on I'm pretty close. The statement of game is not much. Correct. 
But that four no. tenant is a net of, of $101,000 worth of potential PCOs. Yeah, but I, I, me in simple terms is we, we have 539,000 of bills hanging out there, right? Potentially, yes. Yeah, and we have 500,000 were negative at Rockwell, right? Correct. That's a pause. That's a hard number. Correct. Comes right off of the top of the 1.450. You know, well, it's not a lot of money. No. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions about budget stuff at this point? Yeah, there might be the possibility that we bring out the rejection mallet. <laughs> <laughs> can't spend money you don't have. That's for sure. We'll just bring out the gong. We'll gong everything. Yeah. So speaking of change orders, that's what we're doing next. So that's the next thing. So we can do the gong right now. Um, tonight, on for, P for PCOs, we are considering three at Johnson and two at Rockwell. Um, some of the, uh, as we scroll through. At Johnson, we are finally resolving some change orders, some, some proposed change orders that have been out here for a while. So we're going to review number 93, which has to do with some changes to the um, to framing and panels at the Johnson edition. This was a PCO that um, you had previously, that we had previously presented at an amount of almost $10,000. And um, you had asked us to go back and see if we can, um, if Perkins Eastman could redesign and we could do a little better. And we did, so we'll be reviewing that one. Um, we also have um, some um, chases in classrooms as well as some millwork modifications due to relocation of plumbing at, at Johnson. And those are pretty much the three that we're going to talk about tonight. So I will start at Johnson with the framing and panel issue. Um, let me see if there's a, there ought to be, is there a sketch with this one? So I could refresh, there is not. Um, so this is, this has to do with um, a, the, the new canopy at the new edition front vestibule. So not the main edition that we just finished, but the, uh, but the entrance at the new edition at Johnson. Um, there was some re kind of repositioning of um, the roof drain from that canopy. Um, and it, uh, the, the roof drain was coming down, it comes down next to the column that holds up that canopy. And so there were, there was some significant, um, you know, kind of back and forth on how to deal with the roof drain, how to enclose it. Do we, you know, enlarge the canopy? Do we change how the top uh, capital was designed? Um, and if, I don't know, Joe or Ken has any better explanation of what we ended up with. As I said, the initial, uh, the initial PCO that we presented to you was like $9,900 and um, Perkins Eastman was able to go back and change the way the, the uh, framing or the change the way the panels uh, concealed that that drain. And I think we also eliminated. Yeah, an overflow pipe was eliminated. Yep. Yeah, eliminated an overflow drain um, and brought that PCO down to five thousand nine hundred ninety eight dollars and forty five cents. Motion to approve. So Dave Olson made the motion to approve change order number 93 at Johnson School in the amount of $5,998.45. Second that. Uh, Roy. Heard second so, Roy. No, no, it was good, Roy. Um, do we have any other questions about this? I think, so as Gerald said, we did discuss it before. We did. Um, and, and originally, those works already done. Originally, when it was brought to us, I think they were still considering doing the work or figuring out how to do the work. Correct. 
and then the changes were put in place um, at a lower cost. So does anybody we else farm? say that again? We have a farm of real numbers. Do you have the real numbers from before you're saying? Real numbers. Quorum. Uh, we do have a quorum, yes. We have five. Of nine? Yes. OK. We wouldn't be actually to this point in the meeting without a quorum. We wouldn't have had a meeting. But, but that quorum would have canceled the meeting. Bob and, and me, right? Y yeah, um, Bob, you, Roy, me, and John Perna. OK. So three regular members. That's a quorum. Two special members. Right. Well, it's it's so the nine is has has the special members in it. Okay. So for the for for this project, the nine people, five is a quorum. For our regular public site, other projects that don't have extra people, seven is the total. Four is a quorum. Okay. Good. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Nope. That's, that's down. fine. I would have had to, unfortunately, if for some reason one of you wasn't able to get here at the last minute, I would have had to cancel the meeting and everybody, we wouldn't be this far along. So sure. we wouldn't have any kind of meeting at all without a quorum. So, but thanks for asking. So any other input on this, questions, et cetera? Can we vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Now, these next two at Johnson um, really kind of give me agita. Let's see. Um, give they, all of us agita. Yeah, they sort of, they, they do go in concert. And I'm going to start with 117 only to see if there's, a, I hope that there's a drawing with, yes. Okay. So, at Johnson, this is the this is the existing classroom wing that goes off to the back of the building. Um, in all of these highlighted locations, so in one location per classroom, essentially. Let me see if I can explain this correctly. The original drawings, the construction drawings, uh, as an example. Um, the construction drawings required or, or specified showed a sink in the in the millwork, you know, along that millwork wall in each classroom, and specified that the plumbing for this sink would come down through the existing concrete block wall. Um, Ken, you can jump in if I mischaracterize. Um, That's correct, and, yes. and the. Um... Plumbing wasn't going to fit through through the block wall, and you you didn't want to go down the block wall because then you'd have to carve out the casework. So they asked an RFI if they could do what they did over at Rockwell and, and have chases at the end of the um, casework, and so that was approved. So they went ahead and and um, you know started putting their plumbing in all the corners of the rooms, which meant that a few of these um, casework configurations had to be redone, but that that's another change. This one was just right. related to adding the chases in. I count on, on his proposal, he has 20 locations. And if you, if you just divide that between the, the number that Verdi had, it's like $637 per pipe chase. And it, it was really the way to go. Um, we, we had a case once where we, we had pipe along the wall and it just, it doesn't look right in going through the cabinet. So, the, so you're saying, Ken, the other option was to have the pipe exposed outside the wall and then dump into the cabinet somewhere. Yeah. Rather than, yeah, that, so. Yeah. But it was drawn to be in the block and that wasn't right. going to work, especially if block is offset the way it's supposed to be. Whose sure. idea was that? And, and so, I, so, so, yeah, so the reason, so yeah, what, what came before is that plumbing was supposed to be in the walls. Some of the locations for the plumbing were in existing door openings, which were getting new concrete masonry units, but, um, but I, I'm not even sure that that location was exact. So, 
what ended up happening is, um, so an RFI was presented and, um, and this solution was approved to, to do these, to, do, to move the plumbing to the corner of the rooms, which then required Verdi to build a chase. And which also, as you can see, required the millwork to be um, modified because now the sink needed to be over in the corner, much like it is in this classroom. So every place where the sink wasn't adjacent to where these new plumbing traces were gonna be, we needed the millwork to be modified. And because of the way the millwork, and, and because millwork was already fabricated at the time that this third grade wing and, and the floor below it actually, the fourth, third and fourth grade wings were renovated. Um, so millwork and countertops had to be reworked in almost all these cases. So we have two separate PCOs one to Verdi for the building the chases and one to Legere to modify all the millwork, um, including, you know, when they flipped some of the cabinets, they needed new end panels. Um, there's a whole, a whole description of the work that was required for millwork. So, so, so typically, if so, there was an RFI and then a approval was given to make these changes where we brought a change order at that um, point? Should we have been brought a change order at that point? Well, so I will also say that this work was all done in the summer of 2020. That's how long ago this, this stuff happened. So, um, or at least that's when the, RF, the RFIs were approved a year ago, I, will, I would say. Um, and yes, so these, these PCOs are, are late. First of all, we have been discussing them over some time, trying to figure out when was the approval given and who, what, you know, what really was going on with all of this. Because in my mind, it's this, this, this work kind of took on a life of its own and went off and you know, suddenly we had relocated plumbing and chases and, and millwork. So yeah, I would say that the, the information did not come back to us in a timely manner, but the work was completed and I understand why it needed to be done. Well, and I would agree. I understand why it needed to be done. It might have been something that we would have approved anyways. However, we should have been discussing it a year ago. Correct. And in this case, the, um, the chases themselves are valued in this PCO at $13,372. And just before we, we finish with that one, just so you have all the information, the millwork modifications for the, all these exact same, you know, circumstance and locations is another $10,951.50. Was, was that done in place? I mean, I know the millwork was already either on order or fabricated, but then did they redo it um, in their shop or was it done on site? So they, so the millwork was fabricated. They redid it in their shop. And then, in fact, some of these countertops were, were subsequently redone again when we rejected the materials that they used. So the, the millwork, you know, the millwork work has gone on for a long time. Um, but they were done in the shop. Ken, are these your subcontractors? Uh, yes. Why, why weren't you getting a change order from them earlier? They didn't, they didn't get it to me and they proceeded with the work. Did you yell at them? Was that, was that? Oh yeah, they, no. we've been going back and forth with this change for, for quite a while. Um, you know, there's, you know, initially there wasn't enough information when it was submitted. So we had to, we had to get, um, you know, more backup and, and more information, uh, you know, so, so that we could present it. So there was some time lapse there, but yes, we, we definitely um, had conversations with the contractor about this. And it's just put us in a position of this not being reimbursable because of the time frame with change orders. Yes, because you, the first thing that the state reviewer looks at is the fact that this this ver the Verde attachment, as it says here, is from August of, of 2020. You know, so they know that that this chases were done back then. Then they'll look at the millwork 
um, and and that also was it was done more much way longer than six months ago at this point. So, so whose wrist do we slap on this? I asked the question. Yeah, sure. I'm sure everyone's asked this question, but how could this happen? How could this happen? And 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 actually be installed. I don't mean, I've heard of pipe being run through cement block. Right. That, so that's the number one question. I think you know to Bob's point, like why would you draw pipe being run through a concrete block wall? Right. Number one, big, 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 big. It's obvious that when the pipe wasn't going to fit in the block wall for a variety of reasons that having to um, relocate the chases or make chases is the biggest part um, is understandable. And since the mill work was probably ordered way before and shop, shop drawings approved all of that way before. And then here we are in the middle of the summer having to get it all done so that school can open in September. Um, I understand that. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. But number one, who the hell drew plumbing chases in a concrete block wall? To me, it seems like a, a very expensive, oops, it is. It is. And, um, you know, I guess we're all lucky that the plumber didn't care where his piping was going because there was no change order from the plumber. So maybe this made his, his job easier. But yes, I will agree with that. There were, there probably was some deficiency in direction on the drawings. And then I think that there was some confusion when the initial RFI was approved. And, um, and without, uh, without a question at that point about what was this gonna cost the owner? Uh, and then the work was done and six months later, the invoices came in. So there really wasn't a good trail of both coordination and communication in order to understand that these changes, you know, just by saying, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Suddenly, you know, we're $25,000 into a change order to the owner. Um, it is it is a problem that I think the entire team owns a part of. So then they can pay for it. Well, if only it were that easy. I know. I think if we should define this change order and send it back to Rizzo, who's responsible for making sure that these kinds of things happen as our prime contractor, and see what happens. So Dave, um, we might need to have you, so what, we, you, what you could do is make a motion. I mean, so basically I'm trying to understand, make sure I understand what you're saying. Um, I, I think that if we're looking at the possibility of getting the change order redone as there, the first one that we looked at was redone um, and, and was less expensive than originally proposed, partly because some changes that were done in the design, et cetera. Um, we're at that point with this. I mean, I, I think the tickets that are attached, I'm not saying we yeah. should go with it, but the tickets that are attached are um, documenting the time spent. We won't so get that. reimbursed for this, right? We will not. We will not. And we won't get reimbursed because it took X months to bring that change order before us after the work was done. Correct. Is that right? Correct. So the fault here lies with the contractors, not with us. So what are they going to do to make up for the fact that we're not going to, that we aren't going to be reimbursed at our whatever rate, the percent rate uh, for this expense? Because they sat on it. I'm not saying they sat, I shouldn't say they sat on it, but they didn't meet the schedule that's required to ensure reimbursement. It was also right. wrong. 
Say that again, John. It was also drawn wrong. You started off the wrong way. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I have the to contractor that. wasn't drawn right through the cement block. Right, right. Yeah. We have, if we're gonna if we're gonna start holding people accountable, we're gonna we're gonna hold everybody accountable who started the problem. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's twenty five thousand dollars, right, between the two of them. Yep. And this is is this included in the five thirty? It is. Yes. It is. I still don't understand what takes so long to get the paperwork because this isn't the first time that we've had change order paperwork hanging out there and um, needing to be, you know, contractors needing to be hounded to get their paperwork in, um, needing to ask again for them to resubmit them to be more specific, et cetera. I mean, the requirements in the very project were laid out to everyone. They were laid out to and Rizzo to their, the subs that were um, brought onto the job. And it's just been ongoing. And we are at the point now where we've just had it. Not up to here, but up to here. And as John pointed out, we're getting to that, you know, would we have approved this a couple of months ago when we had more in the contingency, probably we would have questioned it just the same because we've got a whole bunch of people falling down on the job here. And again, like I said, I understand the need to do what was done and I understand needing to get it done quickly because we had to get school open. Yet there's, there's in every project, there's stuff like this where it has to get done quickly yet it can be, the paperwork can be done properly. People that do the work are not the people that do the paperwork. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But the people that do the work and the people that do the paperwork are part of the same company and they yeah, they right. need they I understand. they should be understanding they should be understanding the immediacy of the getting things done. That's right. That's you know, six maybe, month, that six month delay in my mind should have some type of penalty value. Well, and I'm just wondering, can we come up with, if we're not going to get reimbursed for that, what's that amount? 45%. Maybe it's, is it, are we at 45 or 43? Uh, I, um, well, I thought it was 40. I think it's 45, but, okay. I, but I can be more exact. Each, each time we have a situation like this, our, our amount, our percentage amount goes down a little. So by the end of the project, right. if, if the reimbursement to the town isn't going to stay at 45%, it may be more down like 43, because this isn't the first one that's not been time, you know, we're going back to the whole electrical thing at the classrooms. Again, we understand what had to happen, but the paperwork that wasn't done in a timely fashion, you know, what's the percentage of reimbursement we're losing? What's that worth to us, the town? And like John said, maybe we... Prove that on them. Like Carolyn said, these have been hanging out there for a while. Yeah, I mean, this work was done, I think, probably in June or July. And then, as you can see, the original invoice from Verdi came um, end of August, which probably was in a timely manner. But when we questioned it and asked for a revision, um, you know, that took another four months to get the final. ECO back to us. And so now here we are, work done in June, debating the PCO in May. It's almost been a year. Well, when it costs somebody, you know, six or seven thousand dollars on a thirteen thousand dollar invoice, maybe they'll do the paperwork on time next time. Or for the next client. I think it's much more deeper than that, guys and ladies. You're, you're, it's on, you're hanging this all on the contractor 
when oh. we have to remember as a team that it was misdrawn in 20 locations. 20. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, but 20. Right. It's a big difference here. Yeah. You know, I, you, you know the hanging all on the contractors is, is it, to me, it's unacceptable. I don't, I'm not Just saying to hang it all on the I'm not hanging on all on the contractor. I'm looking at the paperwork part, which is causing us to lose reimbursement. But yeah, again, but how did we get to the paperwork? We had right, to right. paperwork because it wasn't drawn right. So let right. them submit it, but don't hang it all yeah. on the contractor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to do something here. We either deny it, approve it, or table it. So, do we have? Table. Can you make a motion? I I move we table this request for additional funds on this change order and go back and consider how we might adjust that number given the points that have been brought forward. One, late arrival, two, incorrect drawings, et cetera, and see how they might play together. And that's change order number 117. Yeah. Plumbing change. $13,000 one. Yep. Do I have a second on Dave's motion? Hey, you might as well do both of them because they go together. Yeah, it, yes. I would. Sure, so. Okay, so it's 117. What's the number of the other one? 123. 123. Okay, so do we have a second for Dave's motion? I'll second it. So Bob seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Done. So this may be, have to, we may have to look at this, like a subcommittee may have to look at it if we're going to make some kind of um, so if you need or want any more information, let me know. Well, you've got pretty much everything attached to the change order, which is in the shared drive, correct? Yeah, that's, the com that's the complete documentation that we have on both of those, yes. Okay, and would you, do you have more information anywhere or is that? I, I do not, but I'm just thinking, okay. you're thinking of making a proportional assessment or something and you- right. Let me know. You know. Okay. Yep. 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 Is there a way to assess okay. the value of the misdrawing of the locations of these? Well, I guess it really just manifests itself in this change in cost for these two subcontractors. I guess is. I don't know how else to. Off the top of my head, figure out what the value of that is. You know. All right, so that was Rockwell. Now, I mean, that oh, was that, at Rockwell, right. we have two um, change requests. This one was presented last meeting, number 63. This is for the auxiliary drain that had to be relocated. Let me find the drawing again here. In the special education room, as you recall, it needed to be routed, the route that's clouded here. So vertical up to the top, over to the side, out the building, rather than this, um, this original route, which you can barely see noted as original, this horizontal um, uh, pipe indication here. You had sent it back for more information or, or just sent it back and, 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 and asked for where is the credit? I, the question was, we were adding all this piping and labor, but where was the credit for the original uh, locate route location? And in fact, it was always in the, um, in the documentation. So, you know, shame on me for not noticing it and being able to explain it last time, but this credit summary sheet does, does include the credit for the pipe, the insulation, um, the hangers, and then they made a, sorry about that, a note here that they adjusted the labor hours as well. 
So in fact, there, it, there was a credit included in what is the total for this, um, this additional auxiliary drain piping, even with the original amount of $10,156.30. Motion to so, Can we go um, back to the drawing? Yes. So the question again, the original one going, which I can see, um, it, like you said, it's kind of erased out, but I can see it. Did that call for it going through block wall? Is that why it had to be rerouted? I think it was a con conflict with the steel, um, steel structure in that ceiling. Okay. 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 Dave, what were you saying? I missed what Dave said. I moved, I moved to approve this uh, angular. I'll Change second order number. it. Roy seconds it. All right, so continuing with the discussion, is this another situation where should they have known what was there when they drew it? Well, no, yep. so, uh, well. Kind of, but not because of other things that were added in there, correct? I'm remembering, trying to remember a discussion from before. Is Joe Collada still on the phone? Yeah, if, if I recall, it was, I mean, this is going way back to MEP coordination. It was a combination of existing conditions and coordination with other trades that right. yep. that pipe could not fit through to that. Right. If I'm, if I'm recalling it correctly. Yeah, I think- This is almost two right. years ago, so. Yeah, yeah and, and, I, and even understanding the structure, there was only just so much that we knew about the existing structure until they actually got up into those ceilings. Right. What was going on. Right. So, so I, I mean, I, I, I think that this is a, a recommended and legitimate change that, that should be approved. And it's that long ago where it's probably not reimbursable. Uh, yes, let's see what they put in here. So, I mean, I submit these, so I don't see a date that's, that's outside the six months. So I don't either. I submit, but this, yeah, this work probably was done, you know, more than six months ago, but this is a sort of change order where I submit it and then I wait to see whether they, what the question is about the price. Right. So. And it's not about when the work was done, it's when the change order was initiated. No, it's, when the, it's actually when the work is authorized, regardless of whether, of when the, the cost is authorized, right? It's, it's a little right. tricky. And especially in this case, when the work is already done, somebody did authorize this, um, this subcontractor to go ahead with this work, so. All right, any more questions? We have a motion and a second. Can we vote? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right, the last one at Rockwell is for a uh, guardrail, handrail um, railing at Again, let me see if I have a picture here. Um, this may be difficult to decipher. Um, let it's me, at the top. Yeah, it is. I was I was going to try and um, grab the actual contract document. This may. Maybe this is a little bit easier to see, but at least you'll see where we are. At Rockwell, the gym, you can see the gym, that's, that's an easy thing. We have the platform addition here on, to the right of the gym. And then going out the bit door to the exterior, there is, an, there is a ramp, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, the need for the railing is because this exterior platform was an alternate that was not adopted, correct? Correct. So um, under the, uh, if the if the exterior platform and classroom had had been um, accepted, 
this door going outside from the from the back of the stage essentially to this new outdoor stage area would have been all at grade and everything would have been fine but because this platform was not built it meant that this platform part of the ramp that goes down and out um, needed a handrail along along that edge so i will go back to the other document so this is a blow up of that ramp the doorway is here um, the platform that creates the sort of the turning radius for accessibility before you go down the ramp down the ramp down the ramp and out was missing a, a, a guardrail that would be the same as the railings that are along all these other edges, this edge, this edge, you know, and this outer edge. So we needed to add a railing here. And that was at the cost of $2,083.73. Motion to approve. So Dave Olson made a motion to approve 125 at Rockwell. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Roy seconds it. Does anybody need any more? It's mostly QSR stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's the, the installations. That's not just the materials, right? Correct. Fabricate right. and install. And install. Yep. Any other questions on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. And that's change orders. Okay. So next is professional services, additional service requests. Oh. Yep. And then we'll do invoices. Yep. Um, so we actually received, uh, Carolyn, do you, I don't, didn't oh. save them. Did you put I, up the Perkins East, the new Perkins Eastman one, at least one of them? Yep. So Geraldine sent these around. We, received them um, just a couple right. days ago. Right. So we're in a situation right now with um, with a schedule where we're you know the original schedule of completing May 1 and then pushing back to May 15 is not happening. And with Perkins Eastman, the extended services um, agreement that we made that covered uh, December 1 through May 1, um, as you can see, and this is, is running, kind of running out. So um, Joe, you, so way I'm understanding it is that um, it's a, an amount of approximately the 10,000 with, with this one, which is Johnson plus another 16,000. So it's kind of around an amount not to exceed 26. No, it, it's it's the ten thousands what we have left from the May uh, to May, right? Um, and so then it based on the average that we spent over the five months, it would have been twenty six thousand that we would need to get to July first. So minus the ten thousand that we still haven't spent. So it's, it's we're just asking for sixteen thousand additional, not to exceed. Not to exceed, but Correct. the ten thousand is still part of the original. Right, so but, that's, but that could still possibly, I mean, you still may use some of that for May. Correct, yeah. correct. So, so, it, so in theory, we've got an amount of not to exceed 26,000, this one, this part being not to exceed 16. Right, exactly, yeah. So it, it the 10,000 is part of a not to exceed that's already in place. Correct, yes. Right. That was hard to explain so, in writing. <laughs> well, that's, I know. And, but I just wanted to make sure that I was getting what you were saying, which I think I kind of did. Yeah, and I apologize um, for getting these to you so late because I, we were waiting for accounting to calculate up to May 1st. So right. get that calculation from them. Which is fine. And it kind of puts us in a position where we may need to discuss like subcommittee and um, not jump, especially since we've only got five of us tonight, we may have to delay. Um, I don't know how the people feel, but we might want to delay proving even though I think it'll probably be fine. Um, I think we delay and bring it to the subcommittee. Yeah. So the other, so Rockwell's kind of the same where there's those two amounts already not to exceed for what's in place and then another additional amount not to exceed. And we're, you're looking at through July 1 and, and, and 
somebody needs to mute because they're making a lot of noise with their papers and stuff. Um, if, if we're looking at July 1, um, is there, so are there specific parts of doing all the closeout? You know, we're looking at July 1, hopefully, so that's construction administration. Right. Overseeing construction, et cetera. Is there part of closeout that you are also a part of, or is that more kind of like uh, Carolyn? Yeah, there's still, there's, we still have to issue the substantial completion form. There's still reviewing pay racks, meetings. Right. Um, and is that included and, in and all close of this? Out submittals. Yeah, even the closeout submittals, we are not near done with those. And a, a big part of it is to have the architects and the engineers review them for conformance. So. Is that included in this or is it? it? Well, some of it has been done and some of it still hasn't come in from the contractors yet. So yeah, it is included in this. And you've got so that. Would, would, wouldn't that have been all part of somewhere in the original contract amount? I mean, obviously we had to close this, close this job out. I mean, I can see us paying for the extra time, but if the closeout hasn't been done till now, then that should have been part of the original. Right, but our, our time has been extended, so- I, had I recognize that and we're paying you for your time. Right. So this is an, an extension of that through yep. July from, from May yep. or July. That, that, I don't, that I don't have a problem, but I'm assuming that the closeout is all part of the original, original docs. The closeout is, but the, the time we're spending to review that now is part of this additional service request. Okay. I'm, I'm maybe, not. It's, it, maybe it's just a uh, misinterpretation, but I, you know, I still think the amount of hours that it takes to close it out have, have got to be about the same. I understand that we're having you stay on the job an extra few months. Right. And we're, and we're paying for that. So right. maybe it's just how you're, how we're wording it, but I think yeah. we're coming out in the same spot. Okay. <laughs> so I, I think so, Joe. So I, th I think we are. <laughs> I, I think you hear what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah, it's included in this amount. Yes. So, okay. Okay. So we need to take this under consideration, um, which we will do. And uh, if anybody has any other questions for Joe, well, we, it's pretty straightforward. And the questions that I asked and Roy asked, I think just are for clarification. Yep. Any other questions with this? Nope, good. Now we do invoices, is that where we are? Yes, yep. I think we'll start with the um, application for payment, construction application for payment. Early, and I um, can drop those off, and I happen to be at the Municipal Center, so I was able to pick them up. They're all signed, etc. So here we have. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, Rizzo application for payment number 26 for the Johnson School and the amount of $397,043.88. I'll second it. John seconds it. Any questions? Obviously all the backup stuff is there. If you need to read that any further. Hearing no other questions, let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Done. And then for time. Rockwell School, I make a motion that we approve Rizzo application for payment number 26. The amount of $46,820.62. I'll second it. We got a second from, is that John Perna? Yeah. And any other questions on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
done with those. And now, what else you got? IES or ESC? Either one. Pull them out so I can mark them off as we do that. IES. Okay. Make a motion we approve uh, application for payment or uh, invoice number uh, 15689 from IES for Johnson School in the amount of $3,977. Second. Second from Dave. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. And then another IES. Make a motion we approve IES invoice number 15688 uh, for Rockwell School in the amount of $2,181.51. Second. Second from Dave Olson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Those are done. And then ESC. Are those the three that you, we held on to because they were for? Um, well, yes, two of them we held on to because they, um, whoops, not, let's go to the other one first. Um, there are two for Johnson and one for Rockwell, and we were holding the Johnson one because they had built up to 100% and they were not complete with 100% yet, but I, okay. they are now. So these are all for the security uh, part of the work. Uh, okay. Tools. And there are actually two, um, two invoices for April. And I don't know why they do this, but they had invoiced like for part of April. And then during the break, the, the week that we had spring break, they came in and actually finished the rest of the work. So, so there are two separate ones for Johnson security, but, it, but in, in total, it will bring them to 100% completion. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we approve. Uh, Invoice from uh, ESC invoice number one one eight seven two six five, in the amount of one thousand five hundred and twenty nine dollars and fifty cents. Second. Second from Dave Olson. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Done. And then the second one for that remaining amount, ten thousand. Yeah. I'll make a motion. We approve uh, ESC invoice number one one eight seven two six six for Johnson School in the amount of ten thousand two hundred and thirty seven dollars. Second. Got a second from Roy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. And then this one should be for Rockwell, right? At Rockwell, and they are not 100% complete here yet because there was still a couple of remaining doors that needed work before they could finish their um, security uh, <coughs> their work. So, um, so there's a remaining amount. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, invoice for ESC, invoice number 118762 uh, for Rockwell School in the amount of $9,681.50. Okay. Second from Dave Olson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. So, Carolyn, I have to ask you, because I kind of asked you in an email. Kathy had emailed us invoices that Board of Ed received from E. Yes. Are they no. not? done yet? Well, they're, so they're not done. And those invoices were not clear. We had, I had a conversation with them uh, prior to the, prior to them issuing those invoices. Um, and they had asked, uh, well, you may recall. So at the last meeting, we had an invoice from E, from e plus for a hundred percent of the work, but they still had, but they had not yet done the final wireless survey to make sure that there was coverage on the whole building. So they were supposed to reissue you had actually, the, the P, PSVC actually approved the amount short of, you know, the, the wireless survey value. Right, right. My understanding was that they were going to reissue the invoice in the correct amount 
that you had actually approved, but the, these new invoices that came were not the correct amounts. So that's why we're not looking at them again today. I'm still working. I still need them to re respond to me as to what were these invoices for? They're not the they're not numbers that I that I was expecting. So, right, because what there's two for Johnson, one for Rockwell, and they sort of seem to be different. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. And ESC right. does. Uh, I mean, E plus does still have work to do. Like I said, at both schools at um, at Rockwell, they still have some interior wireless access points to install and at both schools they have all of the exterior so th so this is not it, this those invoices are not holding anything up as far as i'm concerned they'll they'll continue to do the work they're scheduled for next week um and we'll deal with it you know at the next meeting hopefully okay so then we have do we have some washer dryer stuff we have to do we have approve these as invoices or do we approve them as um proposals so this is an in this is an invoice at this is for the actual washers and dryers and cords and hoses and stuff um, for both schools um, so this is an invoice so we would like the invoice approved the order was placed they'll be delivered as soon as there's something to hook them up to and they're, they're all hooked up I, <laughs> I know <laughs> they weren't when I got the invoices all right, so they're all in and they're hooked up. So this is the invoice for the washers and the dryers, um, one at each school. Okay, I will make a motion that we approve the invoice from the Zeta appliance, but they're not separated. It doesn't matter. This is not a reimbursable issue. This is just coming out of project costs. Okay. So it's, it's you'll put them you'll put them in the right place. Yeah, we'll assign them to the right place, but but, but this is not something that the state was going to reimburse anyways. So okay. So um I guess it's invoice number eight five five three three zero six in the amount of three thousand one hundred and eighty-three dollars and twenty cents for washer and dryer at both schools. That's my motion. Yes. Second it. Roy seconds it. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Done. And then the auto plumbing one. The auto but, is a quote. Um, so I, I guess the question is whether you want to authorize the quote. Um, since the work is completed, I presume they're going to present an invoice soon, um, and you could just approve the invoice, but uh, just so that you could, so for information's sake, it should be in the amount of $5,460. And that's for both schools. That's for both schools. Let's keep in mind that at each school, the original change order for water, right. for plumbing and electrical was $24,000, $25,000. Yep. So, yeah. Um, and again, we don't need to separate this out. I have the electrical hookup coming. That yeah, I had talked to Trish about that, and she said she didn't have it yet. So, do you okay. have any idea what that what it what it is? Bob? No, ma'am. Okay. Still, it can't be twenty thousand so, so dollars. No, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> so, do we know then that um, that we're going to get a separate invoice, or should we? I mean, this says quotation on it. If the invoice yes, is going to be. Would, yes, their invoice for the other, for the previous work that they did on the sanitary was, was different. a different format. And there was an actual invoice. So that's what I'm saying. We could wait. This could just be informational. We're, we'll expect an invoice in the amount of 5460. You can approve the invoice when it comes in. Okay. So, Bob, maybe you let them know that they can send an invoice. Yeah, I'll actually see Eric tomorrow. Okay. So they can send an invoice, we can deal with it next time. Yep. Um, and that's it for invoices, I think, tonight, that right? That is all. Okay. Yep. No key. Um, well, yeah, it is all so for invoices. I guess I just, I wanted to um, ask Bob about the additional landscaping. Yeah, I got, I, I got some bad news there. The contractor pulled out. He didn't want to quote it, oh. oh, but he waited to the last second to tell me. Yeah. So uh, Terry Yansky told me today to 
uh, use another local contractor. And um, I, it was, I think there's more to the story, but bottom line is he didn't want to, uh, he didn't want to quote it. Maybe bigger than what he, he was uh, expecting to take care of or something. I'm not sure, ma'am. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see what they come up. You know, if we get somebody else to look at it, we'll see what they come up with. Mm -hmm. All right, that would be it then. Okay, so we're done with school stuff. Um, I'm gonna ask the remaining public site people to stick around for a bit. And there's a couple of things I wanna bring up, um, but thank you, Gerilyn. We'll be in touch if we need more information on uh, the whole things we brought up. Yep. And um, okay. I, I guess it, so Joe, you're going to let us know when Malone and McBroom might be coming out. Yes. So we can, um, hopefully either Bob or me or one of us um, can be a part of the meeting them so we can talk about that whole field area, mostly the softball field area. A couple of things that we need to do there. Um, and I don't know if we'll be, would we have can be there too, possibly, or would be something that they then would be information that would be given to Ken to have whoever do the work. But it would be helpful to have them have everybody there together to understand what we're trying to accomplish. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. And Nancy, okay. yeah. Nancy, just FYI, okay. uh, I leave the 19th for 14 days. I'll be uh, okay. out of the country. You're leaving the country? Well, the I'm in the country, <laughs> but uh, I'm in Hawaii. Oh, that's too bad. Can we come with you? Sure. We'll keep you on okay. Zoom. No problems. The Zoom works good. Well, no, but um, <laughs> as far as meeting with Joe and Malone and McBroom, um, so that you said the 20th or the 21st. Yeah. Right. The that's 20th. When we, I'm sorry. That's when we scheduled yeah. them because we wanted the site work to be as, as complete as possible for them to punch list it. Got it. But well, so, uh, so on the 20th, um, we would have our OAC meeting at two. Right. So you probably wouldn't want to do it at exactly the same time. No, it would be probably in the morning. In the morning. The right, because I want to try to be there and I know I have to go to the dentist at one o'clock. Okay. <laughs> so if we do it in right, the morning I'll, I'll, and then I get to go. I'll talk to them tomorrow and try to push it for the 21st then for Friday morning. Yeah, but if it's in the morning, if it's at nine or something like that or eight yeah. or whatever, Whatever time people can get there, I, the dentist is at one, so I can get to the dentist in time. On, on Friday, you have the dentist. No, Thursday's the dentist at one. Oh, okay. Right. Friday, um, Friday, if we do it in the morning, that would be favorable too. Okay. Not in the afternoon, but I just want to make sure I can be there. Bob's not going to be there. And 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 Bob, what time is buses done in the mornings? The parent drop off. I would. I would say, you know, 7.45, 8 o'clock, but you should be good by then. Oh, wow. That early. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's tentatively say the 21st at 9. If that works for everybody. Okay. Yeah, and then everybody can kind of go about the rest of their day. Okay. Okay. Would they, well, you you send it? Will, will they send an invite out on that? Yeah, I'll send, I'll send oh, an invite. Wanna... I'll confirm it with loan first yep. and then I'll send an invite. That'd be great. Thanks, Joe. Roy, you want to be included on that too? Yeah, if possible. I wouldn't mind walking around the site work. Okay. Okay. All right. So thanks all school folks. Um, Thank you. And, yeah. But Dave and Bob, I want you to hang around for a sec, please. Okay. Nancy, there's one last thing. I'm, I'm getting, so I, I'm doing the closeout. I'm, I'm getting um, some claims from contractors on uh, change orders that were previously disapproved by us. So I just want to let you know that there, there are going to be some issues that we're going to have to discuss. I, I got some from Ferguson for for both schools plus the mechanical and um, some of the amounts we're going through and we've previously disapproved them but um, during 
this process of going through all the contracts, there are some of these contractors that are, are coming back for what they feel were wrongfully rejected change orders. Okay. What, so you would, bring, you would bring them forward as a, a, a change order again? Well, I, I, I would probably send you something to, to let you know, um, you know, what, what we're seeing and, and then, you know, what, what we feel that um, we're having a hard time resolving because, you know, there, 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 could, there could be areas that, that they're right. And if, if they were to, you know, go further with it, it might not be in your best interest. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely um, um, send you something on it so you know what's going on. That's okay. Good. Could, yep. You're going to send it to all of us? Oh, yes. Yes. And include Gerilyn? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay, good night. Good night. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. So, good Dave. Night. Good night, Joe. Thanks. Good night, Ken. Thank you. Dave, Dave and Bob for school project. Um, you. So you were appointed by the Board of Selectmen to, to serve on the school project and your appointment goes until they take it away, just FYI. Um, and so like Dave at the quorum, part of the reason why I was kind of poking everybody about whether they were coming tonight is when I heard from John Menti first and then um, Dave Horvath who said he was gonna come and then he said he wasn't gonna come. And I was like, okay. Um, and I asked Kathy if she had heard from people separately, which is why I was kind of, you know, I asked Roy specifically, John, Dave, to make sure we had a quorum. Because I wouldn't want to, if we had, if we knew we didn't, then I would have immediately canceled the meeting or rescheduled and had a special meeting at a time when we could all meet. Um, we're going to be down one person for a little bit. Um, I got a um, resignation letter from Gil Atelier last week and filed it with the town clerk. Oh. Um, Gil's got some medical stuff he's dealing with and getting checked out for, et cetera. So he feels it's best for him to step back right now. So we'll be working getting someone to fill that spot um, using the appropriate process. So that's just, so we're down one person for a bit. So we'll have to take that into consideration. And we're moving into like vacation time and stuff. Maybe we won't get to go to Hawaii, but um, people are going to be away. I know Dave's going to Maine soon. So he may miss Thursday. You know, the next on Thursday. I knew it was soon. I wasn't sure how soon. Just hey, we're probably back in time. Nancy. So then if we're going to have a, a subcommittee meeting soon, we're going to want to do that to discuss some stuff. Is that what you were going to bring up, John? No, I was going to tell you. Tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, I'm going down to Stanford to AA Washington Boulevard. To <laughs> work. Oh. <laughs> You're going? Are you going to bring some wine with you? Some wine and cheese? So we also have, a, as a bullet, executive session anticipated because I wasn't sure if there would be things for us to discuss during that session. But I think we might want to wait till more of us are here and we want to wait for our subcommittee to have um, some further input. I agree. So what do you, yeah, okay. Okay, so then um, any other school stuff that anybody wants to bring up right now? Yeah. Our subcommittee should meet soon, but um, we got a lot of caca to deal with here. And I think John Pern is right. We're going to have to really here. We said no to a couple of PCOs, but now they're saying they're going to come back and fight us. So I don't know how we deal with it. Don't know how we, we deal with it. Look, I, I think we got to just take our time, look at the list and we'll yes. decide and I, how to do it. As right. And I, I think I that like taking a hard stance, I tell you, I'm getting very concerned, similar to John, you know, that, that there's not a lot lot left here and uh you know I we might too. have to dig in on on everything and and mm -hmm. uh you know and typically when you reject the change order it gets 
taken out of the there's um, contingency. It should. And I think we have, for some of the ones we have re rejected, we have a great stance for it. Yet at the same time as John brought up, you know, should it all go back on the contractor if they threw, how can you draw plumbing through a concrete block when the blocks are staggered so all the holes are never lined I never up? Heard and, of that. I never like, heard of that in my and, life. And also 20. Mm -hmm. 20 of them. It's not like it's one. Yeah, or one. not one or two. You're right on on that. I, yeah. I, you know, that, I, I gotta say, was, yeah. I know Rizzo hasn't done the best job, but I'm going to tell you this. This is how I think. If it was drawn right, we yeah. wouldn't have had a change order to worry about. No, right. no. And I think that in looking at this today, if, if, we threw three changes. The wash. If, yeah. If yeah, the washer and dryer had been drawn in on the original wow. prints, we yeah. wouldn't be yeah. talking about this either. You're yeah. talking a roof drain on a canopy. That's that's right. Yeah. 101 Perkins. Yeah. So, whether they like it or not. Yeah. And even if you were to take those the drawings of the plumbing theoretically down through the concrete wall, but putting it on the face and putting a chase around that, right. That'd be in the middle of the room. Having it over in the corner makes a whole lot more sense, but Right. Yeah, and it's not actor are... coordination. Absolutely not. Yep, I it's agree with you, not, John. Not all of it is right. No. Yep. And yep. it is not all Rizzo's fault for sure. No, absolutely oh. not. You know, there's one hundred twelve thousand dollars hanging out for our friends at Perkins Eastman, and you know, part of that probably goes to this issue. Yeah, and yes. it's the other yeah. issue. I agree. Well, and there's it's actually. In a way, it's more than 100. Well, there's the 112,000 that's supposed to be for, from November before, and right. now they want another couple thousand for each school, a couple, you know, 16 for Johnson, and I can't remember how much for Rockwell to go Nine, forward. Nine. But Roy, Roy, the the point that you were making is that the closeout part would have been a part of their original right that's uh, contract. Yes. He's saying that it's in this amount. It should be in their original amount. Well, take it whichever way you want. I don't mind us paying for the extra month or two, but in my mind, the closeouts, you know, the, the closeout amount yes. is there. Yes. Period. Yes. 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 The so, closeout amount. Yes. I have a I have a little different opinion on the month to month thing. When when we spent plenty of time talking about three change orders on mistakes they made on the drawings. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you're yeah. rewarding them for bad behavior. And that's yeah. uh, and, and those are the ones that were visible. Many of these other ones are not visible. Right. You know, that were yeah. that we have paid for. Mm. Right. 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 Okay. So um our next meeting is May. I'm getting to my calendar. 25th and hopefully we'll have uh, if any subcommittee stuff needs to be done we'll do that before plus the meeting with the site work Bob I'll make sure to connect with you to make sure I have as much information as I need if it's going to be me and Roy meeting with Malone and McGroom about that whole song area mm -hmm. um, there's one thing that I noticed on the I had mentioned to you today when we met about that piece of conduit in the ground Right. And then we also didn't talk with Ken about the uh, ditch, the ditching from the building over uh, under the driveway. No, we figured, I figured we'd do all that and we, but maybe we should bring it up more. I mean, that's got to be, so part of that, um, figuring out the conduit part, maybe I'll have to ask Gerilyn to kind of get in that, get with Ken on that, that bringing the conduit for the electrical from the new utility room across the driveway, across the access route right. and to, into the bank somewhere, wherever, I think should be part of the project because if that conduit was in there, it's actually in, in so the meeting notes from the OAC meeting, which you can get on, you know, the shared drive, it's actually um, mentioned in the minutes. So I said to you how they found a conduit mm. while constructing the accessible walk down to the field an existing conduit was discovered. Some supposition that the conduit may run to the scoreboard 
But then it says B. Germanaro previously reported that the scoreboard has not been operation for, operational for about five years. I don't know where that came from because you weren't at that part of the meeting. Yeah, no, no that's no, because I physically yeah. saw it working. Yeah, 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 because we check it out uh, prior to the beginning of uh, each season. We go down there, we turn the disconnect on. I check for any, you know, grounds, you know. So that part of the digging the ditch is digging the ditch. Putting the conduit in for the electrical needs to be part of the project because they right. left it up to, to begin with. Putting the water pipe in and that part's got to be a separate ad. And does it come from us or does it come from, it's probably, you know, it's probably going to be a change or a million dollars. We'll have to ask them to be reasonable about it. What's the water so, line for? The irrigation. So, um, irrigation that Originally, Park and Rec wants. Did, did we always so, have irrigation? No. Park and Rec wants to, is looking at having the soccer field irrigated. And it's something that they would do and pay for. Yeah. But it would be better to put, put the sleeve under the ground before they pave the road. So it would be just that part of, of having a sleeve that goes into the building and goes under the road and pops up somewhere where they would then access it because park and rec has installed our irrigation at some of the other fields and some of the other schools yeah. at their expense so um it's just getting that sleeve under the under the road before the road's paved so i'll have to see about like getting some, that might want to get done before we actually meet with malone and mcbroom i'm not sure but we might need bob you and i can talk about that and see <laughs> Like, or do we need to push on some things to get done before the meeting with Malone and McBroom? All right, so um, anything, any other school stuff that we need to, because Roy and- Hey, uh, Nancy, if we meet as yeah. a subcommittee too, I'd love to see that list that Ken was talking about of the subcontractors and the change orders that were, were a problem or the uh, request. Yeah. So, I'll email him and see if I can get it more quickly than, yeah. you know, and if we want to have. That'd be good for all of us to know what it is. You know, there yep. might be more yep. items there that are kind of hanging out in the background. I agree. Right. And I think if you look, if you look at Geraldine's PCO log, some of those might be on yep. there with the indication that they were either rejected or. There was and, a couple, you know, there was a couple big ones too, Nancy, I think. And I think that there, um, there was a, a claim, a delay claim yeah. by acoustics. And we may need to deal with that at some point because the, the delay claim from acoustics, which I think part of it came in recently, is cites part of some COVID stuff, but also is looking back to Rizzo's bad scheduling a year and a half ago, way before or more than that prior Please. to COVID. So yeah. if they're, you know, putting in a delay claim and wanting more money, they've got to really be more specific if it's COVID or if it's not. And then if they do it, who else is going to do stuff like yep. that? So, yep. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to have a subcommittee meeting for the Perkins Eastman, the 22nd through the 30th, I'm out of town. Okay. But I'm not in Hawaii. <laughs> I'm only traveling halfway across the United States. Well, I, I think we wait. should wait a little bit until we get that list so that we can see everything. Okay. And right. uh, I think no, I just that, to... uh, I'm, I'm not even advocating that we have to jump to do this. You know, I think we've okay. got to do it in a timely manner, but, but sure. you know, I don't think once we get the list, we start to see what it is, we can put the whole list together. I'm not, you know, again, I'm quite happy that we haven't jumped to any conclusions with Perkins and Eastman because you know the more we get into it the less likely I am to go anywhere on on their request exactly so but at the same at the same time Perkins Eastman is making it sound like um, they'll keep working if we approve the additional amount going I, I agree with you Perkins, Nancy I agree on that one going forward you know but I, I do want to make sure we keep yeah, the air yep. clear as far as hey your yep. previous stuff is your previous stuff we'll discuss that later but uh, you know 
Right. But if we're going to look at the um, additional, the new additional, a new extended yep. at the next meeting, we may, do we want to discuss that beforehand? Yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with the new additional per se. I, I have less of a, less of an issue with that uh, because that's what we asked for. So, so but do we want to discuss, do we want to discuss that as a subcommittee before our next meeting? That's fine. I think we could do that fairly quickly, but it'd be nice okay. to have all these items together. I mm -hmm. think for the, you know, the extra month or two months that we have the 16 and the 9,000, I think those are going to be easier for us to accept than, mm -hmm. you know, looking back to some of these other ones that they have. Right. Okay. So. Okay. Anything else? Um, John and Roy, I'll give you a police station update. David, John, Bob, if you want to stick around for it. <laughs> well, nothing hey, we you won't have a quorum to do a motion if you. No, we don't. We don't have any. Um, oh, you mean to stop the meeting? You can't. You you only have three. <laughs> you don't have. So a, I okay. Oh, we're so not you kind of have to. You kind of have to what? table discussion on other things and. Okay. You're so here. then, what I'll do is you email you. I'll email you. I'll email everybody what I received from Jeff Anderson this morning. Okay, good. Just, so work has come started on the firing range. I was over there just quickly looking at it. They've been working, the Masons have been working. And there is a, um, right now they're attempting to, uh, attempting, they, they're working on procuring the elastomeric coating because it's not something you can walk into a paint store and buy. No, so they're exactly. Getting that, they're getting that and then they're going to do the test um, area in the back. Good. So, well, that's kind of, but I'll email you Jeff's um, update Good. because Thank you. then we'll end the municipal center locker room. We'll talk about it another time. Okay, All right, so then we'll do a motion to adjourn. So moved. Dave second. says so moved. Roy says second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, thank you, Nancy. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thanks for yeah, being here. Hey, Nancy, okay. tell, tell Gil we've all been asking.